little ode to Jersey called Old 89. <clears throat> Crashed my lightning blue 89 Cavalier into the one and nine divide after the Giants won Super Bowl 42. So I wandered the Jersey City underworld, cloud heavy past motorcycle hangovers and white manna, thinking how a lonesome star like mine could get the moon's attention without police and hospital lights on my tail to sweep up the busted glass and me off someone else's powdered lines. Everybody's drunk tonight, Saturn ringed, speeding with some sweet heartache wrapped around a tattooed arm like a worn-out Timex or a cheap bomb. Yeah, and I think about the snapshots of my autopsy haunting the front page of the journal. My little roadside diversion loitering the YouTube expanse for stoned age frat boys with nothing better to do than record my last minutes for his 15 of fame. My own cheated for a late night thumb sucker. Platinum's second mate in heels. Said she's been searching for a strong sailor with an ashtray heart so she could burn away the last of her regrets. I mean, what else can you say to an offer like that when you're dizzied off a 12 pack of bud and lost in the beautiful car crash beneath the bridges of her eyebrows? Sure, I tell her. And tearing apart my ivory button down, I lay her head on the scar where my heart used to be. I'll put out the pain, love, in both of us. Nice. Well, All right, being in Jersey, I write a lot about diners and waiters and waitresses. <laughs> and this is called The Last Sip. She sits sipping a black joe by the roadside diner of exhaustion. Her hair drops in a slow ten hours. Soft lullabies whispered under her breath. Four more hours, she says with a smile, but nothing around her turns to gold. She sips until the spoon reflects her sadness, until one last drop of black space remains. And when the diner is empty, her thoughts expired, and the swivel stools are outdating like the hairstyles of customers from Bayonne. Yet, still she sits, savoring that final sip, the last hour in a coffee pot of hours, the wayward sway home. The tomorrow that repeats and rewinds, repeats to rewind, repeats, rewinds, jammed. I like uh, Gregory Corso a lot. I read a poem once of his, and uh, I was like, oh fuck, I never hope I'm that guy. <laughs> well, here we go. It's called, uh, the poem that he wrote is called uh, I Am 25, if those of you might know it. And this is my response to it. It's called uh, Revisiting Corso. Oh, brother. The lines you left behind. Gasoline choked like runaway girls on a drunken heap of downfallen roses, ready for the match. All those sad stories you graffitied onto my brain dug holes eternities deep into my essence as a poet. Yet, I'm afraid, I'm so afraid I've become a reflection of those old poet men you so violently despised when you were 25. But hey, you can't knock me out, and I can't escape you, like some ghost at 12 Ash St. Place. So I sleep with the lights on, 
like John Lurie, I close my eyes, keep weapons at my side every night, and especially on your birthday. <laughs> up your asp, Cleopatra. I've something more to say. We're timeless, frost-skewed tree branches barking under our own insignificance. Our actium was lost long before the war. I don't know where I'll go. Though I know this leaf lane portico well enough, I'll take my place. Perch beside the gold felines atop your silent mantelpiece. Each one weighted with the remnants of emperors that once drank in your everlastance. And we'll wait for you to join us. Uh, Anthony said, I don't know if he said it, but I would have, that was him. Anthony. All right. <clears throat> sort of in the vein of the um, old 89 one. Uh, it's called Pale Imitation of a Rusty Old Nightclub Performer. Take a guess which one. True story. All these are true, except the Anthony one. I play this ragged piano every night. And every night you walk away to the beat of another song and leave me scenting the stale surround for your skeleton embrace. I become a paler imitation of Tom Waits, drunk and broken-souled, watching broken-hearted itineraries slow dance on shattered bottles of rusty bud, each escorted by a crushed smoke concerto filtering its memories into the ceiling fan of this downtown nightclub ticking and talking for a bridge that might never come. The rustled cheeks of loneliness, that sour milk taste of leftover jazz, open mic amnesia peacocking amidst the barflies and the brooders, it's here. But I remember every menthol laced word you'd ever lit up against my coarse matchbox heart. And this piano. <laughs> this piano is a ransomed Polaroid alibi tossed into this musical ashtray wasteland, and it's lost. And all I can do is play for my soft blue winter, switchblade romance, my sacrificial requiem, my blacked out supermarket conversations with no one in particular, my turbulent zoot suit detective, half-eaten Joan of Arc, my wet dream on the edge of a razor, my dirty protection, my want of stability, of rekindled, rekindled peace, this my one more encore performance, invoking your sweet animus home for more and more of our old replayable wars. Hey guys, hold it up. A few more? Four more? Four Beautiful. Minutes. Four minutes. Oh, four minutes. Perfect. Uh, that's about four minutes. Cool. Um, this is called uh, Footprints. It's a, it's a newer one. Some of these date back a couple of years. Uh, this is a newer one. Uh, called Footprints. You can never be truly naked with all of that ink etched into your epidermis, living off and loving every once clean inch of you. Footprints clawed into ivory sand skin Silverfish constellations screeching against chalkboard skies. Messages bottled in between every already dead shimmer and sigh. 
Whiskey aged and St. John bathed. An afterbirth of broken doors leading us to transcendence. If only my words could learn to live off the indigo wilderness of your flesh. These same wanderers I whittled and scratch onto sandless shores in your absence. Then, once again, might you be truly naked with me at your side. Even amid all your needless ink and mine, we try so, so desperately to make sparkle and shine. I'm gonna try a, I'm gonna try a brand new one. I literally wrote it yesterday. Um, and I think it's up here, but it might not be. So I'm gonna do this and have this ready to go in case I panic. Uh, yeah, just some new stuff I'm thinking about. This is called, uh, All Those Zombies. We learn survival through third-party first-person experiences. Twice-told telltale shooters. Pixelated wild west worlds mistaken for real life. Hashtag IRL. Oftentimes the first to die in a fallout apocalypse now. We fail to realize that we're no longer the ones struggling to survive, but the hordes of zombies fighting to live. Got one last one. I want to thank you guys all for listening and thank you for having me. This is awesome. I can't wait to hear the rest of you guys. Uh, this is at closing time. So that's a little, little closer I like to do. <clears throat> Another true story. I watched the little red-headed Filipina collect the candles from the cafe tabletops and blow them out, one by one. All except mine. You see, without a glance, she assumes I need the light. And that's how you know you've become a regular. <laughs> We've all been there. When the waitress leaves a flame burning for you at 9.54 p.m., your coffee cold but still as dark, sugar packets porcelain abodes refilled, forks and knives wrapped tightly in tomorrow morning's napkins, that's how you know. When it's time to go, but no one sends you home. When she lets you blow out your own candle. Thank you guys so much. Thank you.